This is one of the mediums that I work in, and this again is one of the pieces that is an oil painting done on top of a cigar box. And if you look closely on top of that, you'll see a mouse trap. So trying to work with this different, many different aspects of both birds, and in this case, the mouse itself. The print in the corner is an intaglio print, and unlike most printmakers who stay fairly flat, this particular piece actually is more three-dimensional because part of the print has been stretched over top of balsa wood airplane wings. So I'm trying to make something that would normally be two-dimensional into sort of halfway between the two areas. So it's, it's two and three-dimensional. Um, I try to try, as I said before, I try to push the boundaries as far as I can get them to go and have a bit of a sense of humor with it. These particular watercolors were the oldest pieces in the show. As was asked earlier, most of the show, 80% of it has been done in the last six months. These are pieces that I started um, a couple of years ago, had a small show in a small gallery outside the city, and four of the pieces were done then, and then this piece was just finished and this is kind of one of the starting points for the watercolors. So um, watercolors are one of my favorite painting mediums because I like pushing it. Uh, most people will put one layer of paint or maybe two. I can get upwards in some cases up to 20 layers of paint with watercolor. So my colleagues used to ask how I used to get the depth. Um, there's a lot of laying of paint and then also sometimes scrubbing it back out. One of my favorite painters in the city of London is a man by the name of, um, oh crap, I'm having a senior moment, uh, Rolly Fenwick. And Fenwick had a show back in the 70s, and I still remember the show from the 70s where he painted fish, and he also did some surrealistic paintings where he literally scrubbed the paper, and the paper got to a point where, in some cases, it was balled up. And um, it's part of the piece. Well, that, that left an impression that you don't have to be stuck with something with a painting. You can actually go back into it and into it and into it and, and play with it. So if something doesn't work right off the bat, I might go back in and scrub it and, and pull off some of the paint and go back into it again. Um, so that's what the watercolors are about. Um, this one here is one about flight and it basically deals with the very first plane that my mother and grandmother went to England in after World War II. So um, that was what was considered high-tech Atlantic flight back then. And it just happens that this particular company that did this one was the American Eagle had it on it, so I've put an eagle into the picture. And if you look right down here, you can see part of a drawing from Leonardo da Vinci um, helicopter. So I'm trying to combine as many things about flight in one particular picture as possible. Um, over here, we have the silver points, and this is where the show for the majority of the pieces started. I wanted to start out with something that was um, pure drawing, and I started out with drawing with silver. Now, to make these particular drawings, you have to put a coating on um, your surface, which could be wood or it could be paper or mat board. These ones happen to be done on watercolor paper and they were covered very quickly with uh, a coat of gouache and then taking the, a piece of silver, you can actually draw on top of the gouache and make the drawing. The drawing will actually change color over time. So if you don't affix them, they will start out silver, then they will turn brown due to the air and the salt in the air. And then eventually they will turn blue, purple, and then black. Um, this particular technique goes back to the Renaissance time period. So guys like Leonardo da Vinci would have done, again, drawings with this particular medium. So it's a very, very old medium. It's pre-graphite, and um, graphite would replace it later. And the amount of silver that you use is very, very minute. These ones, all of these drawings were done from actual skeletons. And as I said, I made friends with an archaeologist whose job it is to work with bones. And um, I was borrowing some of the skeletons from him and from the school that my wife used to work at. My wife happens to be a biologist, or used to be a biology teacher. So I still have access to borrowing stuff from the school that she worked at. 
And this happens to be one of the actual skulls that I was drawing in the, in the jar, as well as there's a duck skull over here. I actually worked from the drawings and would crack off usually one of the drawings in a, a couple of hours. These works are based on birds, and basically they're either bronze or they are aluminum. Um, I also incorporate the, the bases are, are different kinds of stands off different things. Um, this would be an Asian stand, whereas this one here is uh, an old Victorian piece of um, silver plate. And then taking those and putting the birds into bell jars. These ones here, again, um, birds that I've worked on both in, uh, they're all in aluminum, these ones, except for the, the one that's a combination of things. And I'll look for parts for things like bell jars and, and uh, pieces of marble from all over and then incorporate them into the pieces. Now, besides looking at aspects of the, the bird that way, I also looked at other things that fly, such as humans, and this one here is based on eyesight and playing with the idea of an eagle's eye, uh, the pun bird brain. So at the back, you've got a duck coming out of the back of the head, flying fish, instead of it just being a, uh, a winged or big finned fish, it's actually a, a, a bird or a fish with airplane wings. This particular suite of um, paintings are little watercolors that I worked on. And if you look in the background, in a lot of cases, there are shapes. And I was thinking about carnivals when you shoot your pop guns at the different objects to uh, win your prizes. So instead of um, shooting at uh, designs, you're now shooting at designs with birds on them. And it again goes to the sort of American thought pattern where the Americans have to have guns to shoot just about anything. And you have to have a a uh, high-powered machine gun, basically, to shoot something instead of just shooting it with a shotgun or a rifle. Um, I have no problem with people killing to eat, but I do have a problem with just shooting something for the sake of blasting it out of the air. So um, that's what, what these are based on. It's, it was kind of working kind of seriously and funny at the same time. So, um, and. There are pictures of hawks in the 1800s being shot about a couple miles from here at Hawks Cliff where the, the birds migrate in two different directions to, get, to go south in the winter. And they would literally cut, shoot thousands of birds in a weekend, hawks especially, because they were birds of prey that were eating other things that farmers wanted to keep. And there are pictures of photographs of people three or four feet deep in dead birds. Um, luckily, we don't do that anymore. Um, this is a bucket of chicken, again, having some fun and playing with the concept of chicken or con and fried chicken. Um, again, being influenced a little bit by our southern neighbors and Trump and his favorite foods. Uh, this was a, a series that I did years ago. It's probably the oldest piece in the show. This one's 2010. And it's a flamingo chicken. Back in when I first started making art, I did a, a, a series of flamingo chickens. Um, chickens being a popular bird that we eat, but also flamingos being those pink decorations that people had in the 60s on their front lawns. Um, I'm a printmaker by trade at first, is where I started. And um, at the time, in the 70s, printmaking was going sort of out of fad because there was all sorts of reproductions being made by men like Robert Bateman. And so this was my poking fun at guys like Robert Bateman by making um, flamingo chickens and, and going into the, bur the bird world of Robert Bateman. The, these are a series of prints that I've started. I was hoping to have a few more for the exhibition, but this is as far as I got because of the complexity of them. They are dry points, so scratching into a surface and then pulling print, small additions off them. This one here is Port Stanley. Um, this was my great-grandfather in the picture, and he used to take the family on Sundays or Saturdays to the beach in the summertime. And he always used to wear a suit and tie in the 50s and sit on the beach in a three-piece suit and roast while the kids went swimming. 
Um, so this is him, and he used to walk like a penguin, so I've got his grandchildren as penguins in the foreground. So making fun of my relatives, but tongue in cheek. The second print has Alfred Hitchcock in it, and it's because my wife and I um, were in Port Stanley in November last year, and we were watching the vultures fly over when they were going back south for the winter. And it's really creepy when you can see vulture, 300 vultures flying about 14 feet above your head. And they don't go any higher than that because if they get blown out over the lake, they'll drown. So again, this is Port Stanley and the buzzards. This one here is about uh, Woodstock, Ontario. My grandfather's in the foreground, my great aunt's here. And this was a, a market that my um, great grandfather, not this gentleman, but my uh, paternal great grandfather used to have a stall in this particular uh, place where he sold vegetables on the weekend. So this event never happened, so that's why it's called When, when Pigs Fly. So it never happened, it's a non-event. Um, again, some more watercolors, and these ones are based on different birds that are from different zoos, and the concept of flying over and seeing the patchwork that birds would see when they're um, flying over fields and, and forests as they, as they go south. So, um, and these were sort of what started the, the series of bagatellas as well, because they started looking at this shape, a lot of bagatellas are rounded on the top and they reminded me of the um, triptychs that you find in European cathedrals. And the reason I started working with the colorful stripes was I was being influenced by an artist from the 60s by the name of um, Peter Blake who did a lot of um, commercial art as well as fine art. And he was famous for doing pop art and his most, one of his most famous um, illustrations is the cover of the uh, Sgt. Pepper's album. And he did, a, a friend of mine who was here earlier today actually has one of Peter Blake's original tin um, prints which has stripes similar to these with a, a woman in a bikini on the front of it. And it's quite a nice piece. Um, when he bought it back in the day it was next to nothing and now it's worth a small fortune. Um, these are the bagatellas, and again, they are functioning pinball machines. They, the springs actually work, and you can put marbles in them, and they would shoot up. And then um, I've never put the nails on these particular ones. I, I wanted to, I'm still hazardous to whether I want to put the nails in for the things to catch the marbles or not. And, um, but anyways, again, working with the concept of carnivals and, and going to fairs and stuff and shooting things. And the, the uh, duck decoys in the foreground have, are, they actually turn and go up and down and they have airplanes as well as bombs in them. I like the concept of kinetic sculpture as well, so I like when people can actually play with them. So um, the last show I had here was mostly kinetic and the kids had a blast as soon as they found out they could actually touch art, which is totally foreign for a lot of shows. And then it was fun to watch them, but it was even more fun to watch their parents and their grandparents, because the grandparents, once they knew they could touch the stuff, started playing with the stuff over and over and over again. Um, last few things. These are actual bagatellas. I didn't make these ones. This one is from the 60s. This is something I would have found in my stocking as a kid. This is a more modern bagatella, although it's based on an old design. And I like people to be able to play with things. So when a kid comes, instead of being bored and bothering their parents for hours, they can actually play with the, uh, the toy. Um, last are the oil paintings. Um, and again, based on birds that, uh, my, one of my favorites are crows and vultures. So I, I tend to paint a lot of them. And culturally, they, they both um, are, are used by indigenous people, um, as well as, because the, they're known as the trickster, it's by British Columbian indigenous people, but also in England, they're, they're very important as well, because if the ravens die at the Tower of London, that's supposed to be the end of the monarchy in England. So they always have six, at least six, 
at the uh, Tower of London. They've always got a few on standby just in case avian fl flu comes and the birds die and they have a few to repair them so that they don't have to worry. Um, this is having some fun. I've been watching the Canada geese, which seem to be becoming more and more, um, the population seems to be increasing a lot in Canada. And uh, again, making it sort of look like a pinball machine, but um, also playing with the concept of hunting. So this is now open season. Um, one of the guys from Duck Dynasty, the patriarch of the family, has this concept that um, Americans shouldn't be giving money to the Middle East, they should actually be giving money to Canada so we can have more wetlands, so we have more ducks, so he has more to shoot. Um, at, at first it sounds like it's a wonderful idea, and to, um, it's more about him having more to shoot. So that's what this is about. <laughs> and again, this was a, a study that was done before. And then if you look at it closely, it's actually um, three heads in one on one duck. So the duck sort of pivoting or moving or playing that kind of Picasso-like game with the three eyes. And above it, it's a, a marble stork from Africa, which is one of my favorites because I like the head. I have a, a real sympathy to the texture of the head. So that's basically the show and it's up till, it's up for the month of January and part of February and I hope you'll come and see it. So thank you very much for your time.